So when it comes to the science and engineering processes, uh, or practices, sorry, I use processes, practices, the, the key here for us in third grade, um, we are really laying the groundwork for future grades, and we are building interest in science. Um, but what we're building more than anything is teaching them how to think and to think logically. So this doesn't just apply to science, it, can, it applies in everyday life. Um, and when, it, when I start the matter and energy unit, the first thing I do is play a game and it's called What's My Rule? And I teach this game to my kids very early in the year because we play so many different versions of it. This one is my favorite because it's examples and non-examples, so they're really having to make a comparison and try to find what is the connection between the two. So I know this is backwards for you, but you are getting this. Um, this is a Google slideshow. Yes, I said that right, it's a Google slide. So you're getting this, so when you see this, I want you to know what I do with it. Um, so I put up here, these are all covered. I don't give them the example first or a non-example, this is all covered, these nice little rectangles here. Um, and so I, they, they know immediately when I put up what's my rule. They're like, oh yay, we're playing. So I give them, I have them, they do this in their notebook, they write the title of the game, they make a T-chart, they put examples, non-examples, and for every time I uncover something, they write it down in their notebook. And I tell them, if you're, if you're trying to tell me my rule after, with one example, you're guessing. So I don't let them just yell things out. If they yell at me, um, it's sports equipment. Why? Well, your example is a basketball. Okay, that's acceptable. So they can't just give me the rule without explaining to me how they made the connection. What's the connection that they've got to the rule? So I would first give them an example, and in this case, it's a basketball. And then I'll give them a non-example, in this case, it's wishes. So they're making those connections, thinking about it. And not, and not, I like to tease my kids, you know, it's our secret joy as teachers. So I only uncover one thing at a time. I'm going to uncover them all for at uh, once for you. But I'd say, okay, do you want an example or a non-example next? And so, you know, we'll go, they, you typically they'll want an example. So I'm going to, maybe, there we go. I'll uncover all the examples for you, and the examples are basketball, desk, peanut butter, ice cream, orange juice, boys, girls. And they're trying to, what do these things have in common? Um, at the same time, I'm also giving them non-examples. So they're trying to figure out, what do the non-examples have in common? Wishes, luck, dreams, imagination, fantasy, so usually, in most cases, um, I, you know, I can add to my list, of course, if, they don't, if they're still not getting it, but typically they're going to get close. Somebody's going to recognize it because they have had um, uh, states of matter or, um, shoot, lost my train of thought there, but they have had some experience with matter taking up space in second grade. So they, some, somebody's going to put it together all. Oh, it's matter. That's not my rule. I don't take it. So I accidentally uncovered my rule for you. But so I, I keep them going until they state things that take up space. Well, what is what are things that take up space? Oh, matter. There we go. So that's one version of um, a game that I like to play with my students because it builds critical thinking skills. Another way you can play this game is with um, Many of you have probably done it with your own children in the car. What animal am I thinking of? And they have to ask questions. But then you can also play, I do, um, what's in my bag? Or there's lots of variations of this game. But this game builds logical reasoning skills. All right, so now in, within my matter unit, um, we have discussed the states of matter. They have, I have given them lots of examples. They have had time to observe and explore, and they now know the states of matter. Then I send them on a solid and liquid scavenger hunt. So, and again, I know you can't really see this, but you will get it. It will be shared with you. That 
But, for example, they have to find a solid that is hard, a solid that is soft, hmm. um, a heavy solid, a lightweight solid, a thick liquid, a runny liquid. So again, um, it's fun, it's interactive, they can, um, and I have, I have actually done this as a homework piece because typically at home, they have a lot more variation and then when they come back to class, they say, oh, what'd you get for the thick liquid? Well, I put corn syrup or I put shampoo. So a good conversation piece. Then once we have, um, have lots, you know, we've explored the states of matter or whatever, then we move to challenging substances. And this is, this is one of my favorite activities that I do. The kids love it, and I will show you some charts, but here's what happens. So for the past few years that I've done this, I've actually teamed up with one of my partner teachers, and we put, um, how many kids do we have in one room? We have like 45 kids in one room. So we made trays of the substance, and it's, we let we, the kids, we moved the trays. So each tray was one challenging substance and we would move physically move the trays rather than having all the substances on one tray because then the kids are they're too busy playing so they only get one substance at a time we move the tray from group to group um that's just that's my management tip but to start the kids are going to a large piece of construction paper is perfect they fold it in half they fold it in half they fold it in half, they fold it in half. So you have a nice chart with four columns and eight rows. You could do more. You don't have to do it this big. I like this big. Um, they, they go ahead, we label our categories, we number. What they don't get in the beginning are what the substances. They just know that at this station you're going to have a different substance. But again, instead of having the kids move, we move the trays. So, all my trays, I change it up each year. It just depends on what I have available and maybe what the Dollar Tree has available. So, <laughs> during this lesson, I chose, um, I believe I'm going to start, we had chocolate pudding, we had jello, um, Toothpaste, I love to use toothpaste. They usually know what it is though because they can smell it. Um, flour, some salt or sugar. Um, and then, I don't tell them, even though you can see them here because this is a finished product, I don't tell them about the last two substances. I just say, then there's two mystery stations because we do stations one through five one day, and then we do the last two on a separate day. It, it, it's easier. So again, I'm all about having kids make observations and record what they see, um, feel, all the, um, whatever. Then their goal at each station, they have to determine whether the substance that they are presented is a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And they can't just label solid, liquid, gas. They have to write. I think it is a blank because blank. And they have to use evidence from their observations. This is key. What you're doing here, when you have kids make a claim and support it with evidence, um, you're teaching them to write. Those TDAs we get to do, Yes, right here, you are building the groundwork. When they learn in science that they can't just give an answer without supporting it, when you go to answer TDAs or work on that type of writing, they will remember it from science. Oh yeah, I know what she means, evidence. I gotta give evidence, why do I think this? Why? There you go, it's really simple. And in many cases, I even give them the sentence starter. I think blank because blank. Um, as they progress through the grades, the writing will get um, more complex.
but you are laying the foundation for it here in third grade with just these simple statements. Don't take just the answer, solid, liquid, gas, etc. Make them, make sure they state it, a claim with evidence. All right, so then the second part of this activity, once you've gone through stations one through five, um, whatever these challenging substances are, and I will tell you, uh, I don't have it here on my tray today, but what the other one I like to use is shaving cream. Shaving cream is really tricky. Um, so, of course, they're going to debate, and the, you can let the groups discuss their ideas as to what they think it is. In the end, several of these are actually um, solid particles within a liquid or suspensions, um, also called colloids. This, of course, these are still solid, even though it behaves often like a liquid. I mean, it still pours, it takes the shape of its container. But if you look at the individual pieces, they are solid pieces. Same with salt. So there's evidence of both liquid and a solid. However, under, you know, if they look closely at the salt, they can still see the pieces. So once you, they have debated their five, the initial five stations, and of course you could reduce the number of stations, it doesn't have to be five. I just like it because it gives me eight nice neat rows on my paper, so I like that. But, on the second day, we come back, and this piece, um, I actually let the kids make these substances. And again, I will provide you a link for both of these, but they will make oobleck, and they will make um, slime. Um, I, I call it gack from Steve Spangler, but it is slime. It's a version of slime. And I like to have the kids make it so that they can see the ingredients that go into making each of these substances. Um, I will also provide you with some video links to, um, that will help the kids understand better what a colloid, I can't say the word today, colloid is. But, so it, that will take you, this making oobleck and um, slime will take you a whole nother class period, at least. But it's, it's still manageable and Another piece of advice when you're making both of them, use a nice tray. It's so much easier to clean up. 